Hi, my name is Jason Short, and I am the owner of VistaDB. What I want like to do in this demo is demonstrate generating a model for an ASP.NET website from the Northwind EF sample. And we will have the sample uh, VistaDB version of the Northwind EF database up on our site. So what I'm going to choose is new project, not website. Then come down here to web and do a web application. I just find that web applications, because they're not directory based, they actually compile, uh, they're a little easier to work with with an EF. And we will just call this Now one of the first things that I'm going to want to do is add a new item and you can select on the data tab and choose ADO.NET entity data model. Now notice this is not provider specific, this is all handled by Visual Studio. So we'll say Northwind EF model helps spell it right. And we say we want to generate it from a database. And new connection. Now I'm using the VistaDB preview. And I am actually going to go and choose it from the root of my hard drive. I have it installed, the Northwind EF VDB3 file. Now the only difference between Northwind and Northwind EF is that the EF version has had some of the primary keys changed and relationships built to make it easier for EF to work with it. If you try to convert a standard Northwind database uh, like the one that we ship uh, from our public sample site you'll end up with key errors where the entity framework doesn't quite understand how to match things up. We'll test the connection, make sure everything worked okay. And Northwind EF entities. Now it's querying the database to find all of the tables that are there. We're just going to basically choose all of them. I'm not going to choose any of the views or store procedures for right now. And I'm just going to shorten that and hit finish. And here we are with our model. You can zoom out. You can also use this uh, thumbnail view to kind of scroll around a lot faster. And you can see that we have things like uh, the employees, the orders, um, the order details got put a little far away from orders if you want to move them a little closer. So here are orders and order details. One of the things that I usually do is that I name my tables as plurals, like orders in this case, but the individual rows that are returned um, are actually in order. So the way that you can change that in EF, single click on the table and change it from orders to order, but now notice it changes that uh, entity set name to order set, whereas I actually still want it to be orders. And so now we have an order but when you're in order details, you will actually still have a collection of orders to walk through to find the orders that this order details applies to. Um, we can do the same thing here. Order detail, order details. And we have the model created. Now that we have the model, let's go back to our default ASPX page to a view. And let's just take and put a grid view on here. Make that a little bit larger. Now one of the interesting controls that Microsoft added specifically to ASP.NET that they did not for the WinForm side is this entity data source. Uh, so we're going to just drag and drop an entity data source out here. And let's configure this to use our model. 
we want to use the Northwind DF entities that we already have in our app config, or web config in this case. And then it's asking which container do we want to use, and we only have one. And now we can choose which entity set, and for this case, let's just take orders. And what type of filtering do you want to do? Do you want to filter by order, um, or just select everything? We'll just go ahead and select everything, and hit finish. And tell it to refresh its schema. And now we can tell this grid view right here that we want to use this entity data source right off of this page. And voila, you actually have your entity being mapped into the data grid for you automatically. Um, so let's just compile that and go ahead and run that page. And there you go, that's a real quick and easy way to get an entity into a uh, grid view using the entity data source. Now I've just cleared out the default ASPX and I want to show you how to do a slightly different type of data binding. Uh, this is very common for data bound controls and I think that the entity framework has made this very, very easy. So let's say you have a, a drop down list that you want to show a list of customers um, or some selection that you then want to filter off of. Um, let's come down and grab that same entity data source. Let's configure it to use our Northwind entities again. This time, let's go to customers and let's select their company name and their customer ID because you know in most situations where you actually go to look something up you're going to need the customer ID. Um, so let's just grab those two fields. Now here from the choose data source we can actually choose that entity data source but now we actually have these fields that you can map up. Select a data field to display so we actually do want to display the company name as the data and the data field for the value. So where do you want the value of each one of those entries to be? And in this case, we want it to be customer ID because that would probably be what we would be filtering off of. Um, go ahead and hit OK. And we will compile. And run that. And you can see now that here in the drop-down list are all of the customer this is actually a really, really fast way to do some data binding in ASP.NET uh, to entities that if you were to do all of this by hand, it really would take you quite a bit more time. This is one of the few data bound situations that I actually really like. And for those of you who know me, I don't use data bound systems very often. Um, so I hope you found uh, this intro tutorial uh, informational. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you.